Aloha and welcome to Hawaii. <laughs> yes, really. You join me on Jumanji Ridge. Over there is where they filmed Godzilla. Over there, Jurassic Park. And right here, the star of our own film, the brand new seventh generation Ford Mustang, which I have attempted to get to blend in, not blend in at all, by covering with stickers. So that's the car sorted. What about me? The old Top Gear t-shirt isn't gonna cut it. What do you mean you've never seen Godzilla playing a ukulele before? So the question is, what am I doing driving a Mustang around Hawaii? And to tell you more about that, I need to take you back about a decade. Do -do 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 -do. It's 2014 and there's a brand new Ford Mustang, the sixth generation of a car that started life in 1964, which means it's the Mustang's 50th birthday. So we hatch a plan to drive the Mustang around every single one of the 50 states that make up the United States of America. It was the biggest and most logistically complicated adventure Top Gear magazine had ever done. Five different teams of people driving over 11,000 miles in two weeks, starting in the Northeast and ending up, having even visited Alaska, in Los Angeles just in time to catch the boat to, yep, you got it, Hawaii. Just one problem with that, we missed the boat. I know what you're thinking, we could have put it on the next one, but the trouble was that Ford needed it back because it wanted to put our battle-hardened Mustang on display. After all, it had never been cleaned and wore the stickers from every state we visited. It looked immense, but it meant we never got to complete our trip. But now, nine years later, there's a new Mustang. Surfing culture on Oahu centers around the famous North Shore. So that's where we headed. Not to go to the beach, at least not immediately, but to visit an old sugar mill and meet one of the legends of the surf scene up here, Eric Arakawa. Eric, how are you? Hey, really nice to nice meet you. Nice to meet you. You too. Yeah. So tell me, I'm, I'm intrigued by this. Why does the North Shore of Hawaii have such a mythic status for surfing culture? I mean, this is the birthplace of modern surfing. And so it actually, it was a sport of kings. You have to be royalty. You'd have royal blood to actually surf. So it wasn't a sport of the common people. And it was Duke Hanomoku, the famous Olympian, that brought modern surfing to the world. And so wow. he was a beach boy in Waikiki, and he brought it to Australia. Yeah. And um, yeah, and, it, and it's just, it just spread throughout the world. So that's where surfing came from. But how do you go about making a board? So it starts with a computer. It starts with a computer. So it didn't, it didn't 40 it, years it didn't, ago. <laughs> no, not 40 years ago. 40 years ago was really just, uh, it was all hand shaped. So this board's a lot, it's, it's really sleek. Um, and that's to, to surf waves that have a lot of power and energy. Mm -hmm. So you can design a board for a specific wave almost yeah. as well as for, for so, people. And so when we, we design a board, so our, um, specialty in this factory is, is custom boards. Right. So. Can we go and have a look at boards being sure. built out and about? Yeah. Cool. Eric shows me the blanks, roughly shaped foams that are the starting point for the work he does. Depending on the board, some are bigger than others. Wow. And that well, would how be heavy for is that? A, it's light. This is not heavy at all, is it? No. Yeah. And this would be yeah. Design and, and 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 shape for, say, a uh, yeah, forty foot high wave. <laughs> oh. So yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Big wave, big board. Yeah, big wave, big board. <laughs> a lot of paddle. Eric walks me through the process. Machine trimming happens first to get the shape close to where it needs to be, but all Arakawa boards are hand finished in a windowless finishing room where light is cast across the board to create shadows, bring up contours and show imperfections. Once the shape is finalised, the boards are then sent off to another firm across the yard to be coated. It's like giving them a hard exoskeleton. So, yeah. this is what's when you come back. 
So, feel that. Oh, it's light, isn't it? It's light. Light, but, but you can feel the strength it's hard, in but it it's now strength, as well. Like, you know? Yeah. You couldn't do yeah. that. The yeah. Game. So there's a real beauty in the yeah. shapes of these boards. Right. I think they look, they're really I mean, lovely. I mean, um, being a, a board designer and shaper, I mean, I, we're always, we're constantly looking at, looking for clean lines. Mm. We're looking for not just beauty, but function. And when they come together, it's, it's magic. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I love cars too. And so, I mean, I see the same thing in cars. Um, beauty and function. And when it comes together, yeah. know, it's, it, it's magic. Well, could, can I cut in there? Because sure. what I'd like to do, can I borrow one of your boards to stick on the roof of our Mustang? It'll improve the way it looks. It? Okay. <laughs> I tell you what, you have carte blanche, you can... Oh my Lord. We'll choose a board then. <laughs> a rolling cliche, a fake and a fraud. I've got a surfboard on the roof I've never surfed in my life. But I do feel quite cool doing this. It's warm, we're rolling through Halaiva, and I'm sorry for butchering the pronunciation, and we're heading out to some of the world's most famous surf breaks. Oh, and if you hear any noises from the roof, I think, I hope, it's from the straps, not from the board itself. So let's tell you a bit about the car because it hasn't actually changed much between the sixth and seventh generations. Its internal designation has changed. It's now the S650, not the S550. But this particular car is the Mustang's Mustang. It's the five litre V8 with the manual gearbox. And it's also got the performance pack fitted, which brings the all important limited slip differential and it's also got the drift brake fitted which i don't want to use with the board on top god knows what might happen but look at the scenery we're driving past glorious beaches on a beautiful day with puffy white clouds in the sky and the sort of billowing palm trees it's just glorious i should be driving along with like the window down in fact why don't i my window down resting my arm on the sill like a proper mustang driver it's just all absolutely glorious. I mean, look at this. I'm gonna to have to pull over for a better look. That's remarkable. The team at Arakawa said, you can't surf at this time of year. The sea is way too flat. But I'm looking out there and thinking that the North Pacific looks quite lumpy at the moment. The long and the short of it is that the surfboard is staying on the car, which makes my pony car Nothing more than a show pony today. But look at this place, the colour of the sea, the trees, the beach. You can see why the North Shore has the reputation it does. Anyway, what do we think of the car wearing its surfboard? Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. I wanted to have a massive board on the roof, but the guys at Arakawa took one look at my flimsy roof rack and went, no, 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 you're having a little one. I then asked them whether the Mustang made a good surf truck. And again, they said, no, no, if you want to blend in and look like a local, you need a Toyota Tacoma. The Mustang, that's what the tourists drive. I do think that it's a good looking car, but then I might be slightly biased because any car is going to look good when that is your backdrop. But of course, I've massively improved it with all the lovely stickers I've put on. Right, well, I guess if I'm not going to be doing any surfing, I'd better get the board back. So that's surf culture. What about car culture? Well, it's as strong here as anywhere else in America, even though they don't really have the roads for it. There are precious few twisties on Oahu and no racetracks. So how do people get their kicks? Well, beach cruises are a big hit with the classic community, and if competition burns inside your heart, then there's an auto solo held in an empty car park at a lower stadium. But what about the Mustang specifically? Time to go and meet some Mustang owners and find out what it means to them. So the Mustang is the first sports car. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. you know, I 
had a Mustang group for over 30 years. Yeah. My head. So from. what is it? Why is a Mustang not a muscle car? Why is it? Why is it not a muscle car? Because yeah. it's the smallest car here. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right? yeah. yeah. Um, it, it 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 came out with a small name. A small yeah. block, right? It came out with a 289 P16 in the earlier yeah. models. So it wasn't really known for its horsepower until Shelby got a hold of it. Right. Right. But now that uh, um, we have access to all the aftermarket parts and everything else, you know. Yeah. I can come out with 450 horsepower, and, yeah. you know, with a 2,500 pound car and mm. first parts of weight ratio on there. It's good. Yeah yeah, 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 absolutely. Traction, not so much. No, 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 traction, no. <laughs> Unless I, you know, put wheel, wheel yeah. hubs in the back or something. Yeah, yeah. So you've had this from you. Yes, uh, I was 28 years old back in 1986, so you do the math throughout how old I am now. Oh, but uh, I, I like the car. Yeah. I think it's a fun car. Yeah. So never never a newer Mustang. You wanted to stick uh, with this and well, yeah, price is relative throughout yeah. the years, and you know the cost of a brand new car. Uh, when I when I have a car that I like to, I was having fun with. Yeah. So I just stuck with with this car. Yeah. And uh, right now I'm playing with the idea of having it fully rescored on artillery, which would cost tens of thousands. Yeah. So yeah. I have to weigh that against buying a car like the brand new. Yeah. I've seen pictures, a lot of pictures of the 2024 bus, I mean, but how seeing it in real life is uh, quite an experience. Yeah. yeah, thanks for bringing it out here. Oh, my pleasure. I'm sorry we've covered it in silly stickers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. You take them off later on. <laughs> Before we send it back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the next day, we went in search of good roads. The views aren't hard to come by, but the roads are packed. Oahu is by far the busiest and most crowded of the six major islands that make up Hawaii. Still, get up early and quieter places can be found. I know it sounds a silly thing to comment on, but the Mustang is really good at just pulling away and using really low revs. And that's the advantage of a naturally aspirated V8. You can just be uh, any revs and it's this meaty clutch and gearbox the gear action's really nice but the important thing to remember is that it's not a sports car it's a mustang and that is a small but crucial differentiation a mustang needs to have this sort of big slightly lazy almost like a muscle car it needs to have that muscle car vibe in a pony car that's why for me the v8 is the only engine to have the ecoboost you drive the car and you sit there with this long bonnet out ahead of you and it just doesn't feel right to have that sort of thinner and more reedy engine note. So it's fun and really good at just oozing about the place. The gear change is this sort of heavy clunk through the gate but it's quite slick. It moves quite well and with the old rev matching on it does a really good job actually. Look at that and it sounds good. It really does sound good. So even just like moving along at low speed, you do, it's just so easy. There's very few manuals that are easier to use than this. Yes, there's a bit of pedal weight to the clutch and everything, but wow, come on, it's fun. And once you're in third, you don't need any other gear. Just let it crack on. With 480 horsepower now, this is a quick car, and yeah, it's got a fair amount of weight to move, and it's not super responsive. There's quite a bit of inertia in that engine. I'd love to show you what it's like at 4,000 revs and above, but Oahu is so busy. You are basically in a moving traffic jam the whole way around the island. If you come near the coast, you're going to be going very slowly. The speed limit's 35, and yeah, if you're better 35, you're doing quite well. So there haven't been many changes made between the last generation and this one, but the key one, I think, is this steering. It's just got a slightly faster rack and it's got, it's better mounted, it's more solidly mounted in the car. And so there's just this, it's not memorable steering, but it's just, it's quite crisp, it's quite nice to just steer around. It's just, again, like the other controls, there's a weight to it, there's a response and there's a confidence that it gives you. And we've got modes to play with in here. We've got some buttons on the steering wheel here and you can switch through from normal to sport, to track, to drag strip. 
And then there's various things you can play with in here if you press the Mustang button that get you into other things, including a cluster theme so you can change your display. And one of them is to make it look like a 1987 Fox body car. It's actually a little bit simplistic. Normal probably works best and track if you really want everything to be out and at you and a bit more aggressive and assertive. There's also the famous drift brake. It operates just like a conventional handbrake, but if you go into the settings, you can engage drift brake. Just one small pull and it instantly locks the back wheels. So it is a complete stunt mode. There's no need for it. And actually in a car like this, with a naturally aspirated V8 and a clutch, you can clutch kick and all sorts to get it sideways anyway. You don't really need that, but it's quite fun. And there's some bolts on the side, and what that means is that you can take that off to fit an upright handbrake instead. But this car is missing something that I think would improve it, because although it's got the $5,000 performance pack fitted with the strut brace and the wider wheels and tyres and the Brembo brakes and the diff in the back, what it's missing is the $1,750 Magnaride dampers, and those are very, very good. They just help give the car much more bandwidth, and without them, the car just feels a little bit unsophisticated. The ride control at the back, it's just a bit bobbly. So the question is how long Ford can persevere with the Mustang in its current guise? The rumour is that they considered everything when they developed this car and settled on not changing it at all. And I suspect the reason for that is that this is now a stopgap. They will have to change. This car will probably last five or six years and by 2030, there will be a proper replacement for it. So they're just hanging on to the last threads of internal combustion for as long as they possibly can. And to be fair, who can blame them? This way they will outlast everybody else. They will be the last full-blooded American sports car left. In a way, the Mustang isn't about the way it drives at all. It's about its place in the American dream. It's a car that's persevered, that's stuck with it through thick and thin, that's still there. And that's why we did what we did back in 2014. I can't conceive of doing that road trip in any other car. The Mustang is the car for the long American road trip. It's a car that fits in every state. It fits in everywhere. I'm just not sure about Hawaii though. I think what's needed is a different perspective on the island. I mean, skydiving is very cool, but the view is a bit temporary. I've got something else in mind. This is James Alagio, commercial pilot, test pilot, float plane pilot, you name it, he flies it. Including this, a naked gyrocopter. So I said I wanted to get a different perspective on the island. I've definitely got one. It's only because the bloated front is dressed in 1920 period gear that I think this is okay, which is all kinds of wrong. I mean, if I can withhold my terror for a few minutes, the views are spectacular. Gyrocopter. This is mad. I'm 
and I sort of want to give up the day job and have a go at this instead. What a compact, stunning, crowded little island this is. It doesn't feel American. Hardly surprisingly, there's a strong Asian, Polynesian and Pacific Island feel. And I suspect America's impact and influence is lessened on other islands. The scenery is staggering. The beach is amazing. This island state is America's most colourful and diverse. A bright blue Mustang covered in stickers might not be tasteful or on trend, but it's a happy, fun car to bring to a happy, fun place. And it means that finally, at long last, we have finished what we began so many years ago. Here is the magazine from 2014 when we drove the Mustang all the way around America. And there on the cover, a little asterisk, us fessing up to the fact that we only hit 49 of the 50 states. We have finally put that right. America completed it, mate! <laughs>